Time for some news! Welcome everybody, Just News, my name is Mike B. We stream this every Friday, so far, mostly, meh, every week or so. Twitch.tv slash AKMikeB, go there. All right, we've got a number of things to talk about today. <clears throat> uh, I have, uh, let's, we're going to start things off with Blizzard stocks, and then we're going to kind of go from there. We're going to go from there. Now, I know a lot of you guys have a lot of opinions about this. I understand that all of you, some of you, uh, myself included, big Blizzard fan, right? For a long time, long time, man, long fucking time, Blizzard fan. Uh, and we, we, we don't like to see our, you know, our, 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 our childhood, like, you know, memories, the people who create our childhood memories, gaming memories, like, you know, turn for the worse <clears throat> or turn, turn to anything other than continue to make more memories for us to consume and have, uh, we don't like change, right? But things are definitely changing at Blizzard. And there's a lot of things that reflect that. And a lot of people are coming out and saying things. Uh, uh, people kind of chiming in. Last week, we talked about Mark Kern saying some, a few things, having a few choice words about uh, the Diablo Immortal uh, cinematic and all that stuff, the announcement and all that. Uh, we covered that last week pretty in-depth. <clears throat> I did a little jab on Mark Kern because my boy. It's like, yeah, Firefall, remember that? <laughs> but he's not wrong. Now, um... Lost Vikings remaster. See, that's what they should do. That's that's you know that's 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 something that I feel like they could have tacked on to the end of Diablo Immortal, and people would have been like, "That's really that's really dumb." But also, yes, <laughs> I feel like people would just be like, "Oh God, the memes." It would just be it, it would actually be bad. It would actually I'm not I'm not serious. Like it would actually be bad, but it would be funny. I feel like it would be laced with funny and disappointment disappointment instead of anger and disappointment. You see, there's a difference. But, uh, but they didn't do it. <laughs> How hard is it to remake uh, Lost Vikings? Just get the Trine guys. There you go. But get the, the developers of Trine. Though they can make a great Lost Vikings mix or uh, uh, remaster. Just get them. They already get other companies to do their games on, anyways. Why not? Why not? <clears throat> so let's go and kick things off with this little clip that I came across that maybe some of you guys have seen. We're gonna go ahead and pull this up right here. Oh my god, Fortnite is making a fucking shit ton. Overwatch is in Fortnite. Why have you Why? wronged us? Right. Sure, okay, they, they... we're gonna get rid of the profit sharing program. We don't like this. We don't like the fact that low level employees make decent money at Blizzard. We're going to get rid of this program because we need more profits to increase our stock price and improve our shareholders and the elite 1% of the company. And so, therefore, you are you don't like this very much, Mike Morheim? Well, too fucking bad. You're gone. Now we pass it. And we get more profits, more money in my pocket, motherfucker, for your work that you're. Oh my god! That's pretty much the gist of the clip there. For those of you guys who don't know, which is fine, you may not recognize him with the beard, but that's David Brevik. He's basically the creator of Diablo, right? <clears throat> David Brevik has a very long history of in video games, mostly successful. I feel um, he is definitely somebody who uh, obviously had a lot of great insight into the Blizzard inner workings when he was part of that community uh, or part of that company. And, you know, he's clearly a little intoxicated here. You could tell by the I mean, let's take a listen real quick. Fortnite is making Wait. a. Oh, my God. Right. Maybe or, or maybe just had a soda. One of the two. But I'm thinking that maybe I made a couple of drinks and decided to speak his mind, which is great because we, we appreciate that. We do. We really appreciate that. Um, so he's making a couple of claims here saying that Mike Morheim was pushed out. That's a pretty, pretty, uh, uh, that's a, that's a pretty brazen, like, uh, comment. Just be like, oh, he was pushed out, right? Uh, fuck you if you don't like this, because he's basically saying that the employees are going to lose their, 
uh, their rev share, they're, they're uh, basically, essentially when you get like rev shares with a company, it basically means as, as the company becomes more profitable, you get more bonuses and all that stuff, right? My wife has that with where she works, where every quarter, the quarterly bonus is based off of the uh, the rev share that they've signed up for <clears throat> uh, with the company. So the company gets more, uh, makes more money, then they get like a small percentage of that. Now, a small percentage of like millions and millions of dollars divided up amongst a couple thousand people still ends up being, you know, sometimes a couple thousand dollars. And so what he's saying is basically they want to take away that, they take that away from the everyday employee, uh, and he's he's implying that Mike Morheim was against it, and in turn that led to him being removed as the CEO and president of Blizzard. So pretty, this is a pretty big thing to say, right? This clip has actually has almost five hundred thousand views. So I decided to go ahead and look. Just like just so curious, I'm like I was like, wow, that's crazy. I now I have friends at Blizzard, but I have not asked any of them if there is any talk on an internal level uh, of them losing any kind of benefits or anything that maybe they had prior to Mike Morheim's departure. Now, Mike Morheim did just leave. So it's very, uh, so it's something that <clears throat> we don't, we won't really know probably until next year or something. Um, Laura would hundred percent say no comment. Yo, yeah. And that's the thing. A lot, a lot of them are gonna say no comment. And you know what? I don't want to put my friends in that, in that position, right? I definitely, I would not ask Josh. Let me tell you, if I ever say, that I have a friend at Blizzard that told me something, it is never Josh, because you guys, I know, because I know you guys would always go to Josh, because you think that's the only person I know at Blizzard, which makes me sad, but that's fine. I'll just keep all the other ones on the, on the DL. So Mike Morheim was the president and CEO of Blizzard, right? He was, I mean, we all loved him. He was dad. <laughs> <laughs> right? We loved him. He he loved his job. He played in the fucking band on the stage. Like he just he fuck he was he was one of us just maybe a couple years older. Just a couple. Uh <clears throat> Jay Allen Brack is the new president of Blizzard. You guys knew that, right? He is not the CEO. So two titles go down, one title comes up. So that pretty much leaves what? Bobby Kotick, I guess. Of Activision, so all these rumors or all these like hearsays of just like oh Activision's taking over and they it's it's over like Activision basically took over like people have been saying that for years ever since they they actually merged they're like oh man Activision's taking over and everything now it's starting to look a little bit more like that might actually be the truth because because J L and Brack is only only the president not the chief executive officer on uh on the board uh. And so I decided to look to see who else left. Like, I'm just curious. Like, man, like a lot, I feel like a lot of people left. And it's true. A lot of people did have left over the past couple of years. Mike Morheim left this year. We know that. Uh, ben Brode left this year. Uh, uh, Chris Metzen. I had to write these down. <laughs> left in 2016. Uh, Rob Pardo, Chief Creative Officer, 2014. Uh, Nick Carpenter was the VP of Art and Cinematics, 2016. And uh, uh, Jose Mosquera, uh, who some of you guys may not be familiar with, but he was on the team for, uh, for a little while. He was in charge of basically the entire Diablo 3 product uh, for a number of years there. Um, <clears throat> now, I feel like he's kind of like an add-on because he wasn't part of the original crew, but um, he's not only the president, he's also a client. <laughs> uh, but still, it does seem like a lot of people who are in uh, uh, leadership positions have definitely been shuffled out over the past several years. Uh, Mike Morheim is just the most recent of them. I, who knows? I mean, I feel like you, you're basically going up and then you reach the top and you go to the top. So I was like, well, who, who is like really left that we like really know and trust from like the beginning? Like who, who, I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's somebody there. I know there's, there's, there's uh, uh, Uncle Overwatch <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, that's, that's there. But <clears throat> you say Adam is back. Uh, but still, yeah, it, it's, it's, it still feels like <laughs> Jeff, yeah, Uncle Jeff, Uncle Jeff. Um, it still feels like there's uh, uh, there's definitely some shuffling going on with the upper management and everything. Um, <clears throat> and so I came across a thread. We're just gonna go. We're gonna go through like just all the different points here that uh, that we kind of came across. Came across this thread that you guys probably saw. Uh, it was the. Uh, uh, don't tell me I want to be a redditor. Don't be a redditor. No. Uh, this was the, the Diablo subreddit. Uh, Dear, you probably saw this. Jeff is a treasure. You imagine if Jeff left? Everybody, he's like the last person that we all like. <laughs> Isn't he? Like, I mean, like, in terms of, like, you know, lead on a project that, like, universally everybody likes, uh, I feel like he's, like, the last one. Um, it would be sad if he left. Uh, so, you probably saw this thread. Activision Blizzard stock value hits lowest point in 12 months. Now, <clears throat> this is true. 
This is a true statement. Uh, but I want to look in a little bit further to kind of see like what's like what does this mean? Like who who is really saying this? Because I don't trust R slash Diablo for my stock purchasing needs. I don't, I don't, uh, no way. So I decided to go ahead and look it up. I pulled up the actual uh, uh the actual stock market here, and I want to go and compare it to I'm gonna compare it to uh to EA because EA is the other one that's not doing very well. We compare these stocks here, <clears throat> and we could see. Let's just look over year to eight, uh, uh, past year here. We could see. Let's just do fucking past six months. Actually, it's pretty significant. Uh, let me actually zoom this in a little. Forgot to make uh, to make this a little bit more accessible for you guys. And so we can see here that <clears throat> it is. It, it maybe it looks pretty identical in where they drop. It is not identical in how far they've dropped. Blizzard has taken a 40% dip from their peak this year, which is fucking significant, right? They were up here at, what is this at? Let me go scroll up a little bit here. They're at uh, $83.39, and now they, they dipped down to the lowest here, which is earlier today, yesterday, at $51.62, or 60 cents, and then they dipped back up to uh, $53.56. So I'll go from like 83 to today's total, which is uh, 53, which I think about this time they're closing up, so $53. That's really significant compared to the same point in time. Uh, we have <clears throat> Electronic Arts. They're uh, they're well, they're down seven seven point eight nine percent at this point. One hundred twenty dollars uh, down to eighty eight dollars. So they only dropped what is that like twenty five thirty percent twenty five percent thirty percent probably thirty percent something like that. Um, but still forty percent. So Blizzard is leading the charge in tanking their stocks. So what happened in August? Well, well, I don't, well, I don't know what happened in August. Uh, what do you mean like back, back, uh, back over here, this area, or you mean like back? Well, August, shit, way over here. I have no idea what happened here. They're in parody here, um, <clears throat> and so people are saying, no, the market is correcting itself as a whole. Uh, so I'll tell you guys right now, from what I can see, that is not true. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull up here. Uh, let me see. Pull up the Nasdaq 100, which is basically a ton of stock, uh, uh, tech stocks, and so you can see that yes. The market has done a little bit of corrections, but nowhere near as severe as Blizzard. So I think the fact still remains that Blizzard is tanking harder than everybody else, despite, yes, there is, there is a valuation issue. There is a market uh, a correction going on with some tech stops, stocks. But I should also, just to be totally clear, the NASDAQ 100 also includes places like Costco, all right? I mean, mostly it's tech stocks, Google, Apple, all those guys. But when Costco's in the mix, it's like, all right, <laughs> like, that's not really, <laughs> that's not really a tech stock, but whatever you want, stock market. But it's tanking, but a lot of stuff is tanking. They're just tanking more. Yes. And that is, that is important. That's an important point to make. <clears throat> Get, excuse me, again, trying to present you guys with the facts here, but they are very interesting. Um, and so, uh, Blizzard is, is again, just tanking harder than everybody else right now. So gonna go ahead and switch over and what i did was um i decided to go listen to their q3 report their q3 earnings call which is where they basically sit down and they read from a they have a, a pre-typed out list and they basically talk to all the shareholders and they just kind of read through the script and say this is how all of our games and titles are performing and all this stuff um and i thought first off i thought something was kind of funny which you know you i know i know that i know that this ip is part of the collection but just to hear these things named in tandem in the same uh, in the same, <laughs> you're, you're already all over it, Mahavish. <laughs> here, let me go and play this thing from this point here. On the first driver, our teams continued to deliver exceptional innovation and execution with major new content releases for Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Candy Crush. These content releases- I just thought that part was kind of funny. It's like, oh, quick reminder, yes, Candy Crush is in the mix. <clears throat> Candy, Crush is, Candy Crush is obviously a mobile game, uh, heavily Mike Riker transaction. Uh, uh, driven. And so I also found another quote here. Same video. And last week, Blizzard announced Diablo Immortal, which will bring this tenfold franchise to a mobile audience in both the East and West. And while fan reaction was muted to the announcement, players' hands-on experiences at BlizzCon confirmed what we believe, which is that Diablo Mobile will be a very well-received game when it releases, and players around the world will love it. He said, if you, didn't, if you couldn't make it out, some of you did, yeah muted he said that the response was muted and that hands-on hands-on feedback was positive and they're certain that it's going to do well all over the place now i don't know if you guys remember i don't have the picture up right now unfortunately but uh the 
There were no, there was nobody waiting in line to play the game. So there was no hype around the game. The people that played it, I mean, to be fair, it did play fine. But that doesn't speak to the point uh, that everybody else was making about the game uh, and its announcements, surra everything surrounding its announcements. So he said that <clears throat> the feedback was muted, but yeah. Uh, it was muted the same way you mute a TV when it's too loud. They shunned their fans. That's what it feels, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. And so I, I, I went on CNBC and I found this great clip, this great clip. We're going to watch some of this here because, because I want you guys to see what the, what finance people are talking about when they refer to, uh, uh, when they talk about Blizzard stocks, because it's one thing for us as gamers to say, sit here and say, oh man, yeah, their tanks, the stocks are tanking because of the bad feedback and everything, right? It's one thing for us to say that, right? It's another thing to hear what the actual people who are giving financial advice uh, to the folks who are buying and selling all of this, uh, uh, you know, all this stock, um, <clears throat> what it is that they're saying. So I'm going to pull up this clip here and we're going to listen to actually the first two minutes of this. You text Lauren, tell him you're not friends with anymore because of people he associates with? No, no, <laughs> that is not the case at all. Excuse me. God, this, this medicine got kicking quick. Jesus. I think it's got decongestant in it. So if I fall asleep midstream, you guys got to take over for me. All right. You guys handle the rest of the show. I'll give you guys the notes. <clears throat> Just do everything in there. It's fine. Um, and so this guy here, <clears throat> we're going to take it. We're going to, we're going to take it. You guys are like, yeah, let's do this. Uh, we're going to take a listen to this particular stream. I'm going to get a uh, full screen here for you. For more on da, what da, the da, results da, mean da, for da, Activision. Da, da. Boop, boop. So here we go. This is a great clip, by the way. This is a really great clip. There's a couple of things I want to highlight. First off is the way that he presents, the way, the way that he talks about games are being sold nowadays. Again, a reminder, he, this, this is discussion between folks that don't necessarily play games. They, they, they advise people in investing in stocks. Okay, so what are they talking about? Let's take a listen here. Let's get uh, our game on with Michael Sepso. Oh, listen to that. That's He's a former SVP oh. at Activision and the co-founder of one of North Even America's they knew first esports organizations, also an investor in Activision. What was the most important thing in this uh, earnings report? I think what people are missing is the digital transition that the entire sector is doing. We're still away from buying discs away in a store. Buying discs. We're still thinking about unit sales. It doesn't really matter anymore. If you listen to what the management said, it was all about reach, engagement, and player investment, meaning how many people are they getting? How long are they staying in the games and how are they spending in the game? It's not about what's being sold at a GameStop or Best Buy. It's about how long are the players playing and are they continuing to buy in the game? So <clears throat> right off the bat, unit sales don't matter anymore is what he's saying. It's all about how much money they spend over the lifetime of the game. This is something exactly that, that he's not he's not wrong. He's not right. Yeah, it's all about physical unit sales. Uh, he's actually talking about like box sales, too. So let's keep listening. The other important thing that I took from the earnings call was, I think everybody missed this, they're projecting over $4 billion in, uh, in revenue this year from in-game purchases. That's more, that's more than half of the total revenue mix. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. So that's a huge deal. This is what happens when my son comes to me and says, Dad, <laughs> Dad, can I buy this? And I said, well, you already bought it. And I, and I have no concept that what he's really buying is some sticker or slick or some additional powers, right? Yeah, and that's where the revenue growth that's is. That's where the revenue growth is. That's where the industry is moving. And the, obviously, the margins are a lot better if you're not going through a physical brick and mortar store. You're just going direct to consumer. They have all the data at that point, and they're closer to the consumer. I think uh, the other important thing, if your son's playing Fortnite, and I know we're going to talk about he is. the battle of the Battle Royale games, uh, the people that are at home playing Blackout right now paid $60 for it initially, and then they're going to buy stuff in the game. The people playing Fortnite didn't buy anything when they got to the game. It's a free download game. I think this is a massive difference in the model. Activision's if, doing a great job of making that digital If the revenue happen. numbers are as strong. Activision's doing a great job of making that digital transition by charging for the box price and charging microtransactions. <coughs> microtransactions, excuse me. Uh, that's the point he's trying to make there. That's, that's exactly what he's saying in case that gets lost in translation there, which is not. I mean, every, everything here is truthful. Again, it's, it's, it, we know this is happening because we talk about microtransactions in games. We talk about box prices and then, and then further microtransactions after buying the box, how much we hate it. And these guys are talking about it very matter of fact. It's like, this is the way it is. This is the way we make money. This is the projections we're making based off of people gonna, that are going to be doing this in the future. <clears throat> uh, Fortnite would gain 
uh, insane money if they just put like ten dollars or something. Yeah, if they charge like ten dollars series, like a starter pack or something, at a box uh, inbox uh, or box in in a market somewhere. But you know, to their point, you know, there's there's a lot there's, there's a lot about um uh, uh a lot to be said about the um about box sales and more, uh, brick and mortar stores and having to deal with shipping and the packaging and all that stuff. Like there's a cost there, so maybe it's not worth it for them to do that at at, at a certain price point. Strong, Mr. Kotick said, uh, talked all about that, and, and you just cited it. Why did the stocks, in a word my son would use, suck? I, I, oh! <laughs> <laughs> you bring it hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm quoting him. I, 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 I fucking love So after watching this clip, I don't watch this stuff regularly, right? But after watching this clip, I was like, damn! I was like, whoa! Just like, not even, not even trying to dance around it. I, I know, I was like, who is this guy? I fuck yeah, me too. Like, seriously, this is, this is great. This is good. I would never <laughs> use such words. I gotta be honest with you, I, I'm perplexed. I really don't know. I, I'm looking at the whole sector now and thinking, I, I can't believe why this isn't a huge buy opportunity. Uh, Take Two did earnings yesterday. Their digital sales were up significantly. Their new Red Dead Redemption is a great game, is performing incredibly well. They've got a little bit of an esports exposure with their NBA 2K game. I think esports, your last guest I saw said esports is gonna be the future. Obviously, I believe that. I've been in the industry for 16 years. Uh, Activision's invested more than anybody of all the public companies in the sector in esports, and they have <clears> kind of the great product, greatest product out there, I think, right now. The floor is open. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, is so no, I, I, I'll be honest. None of the rest of the points really uh, matter for for the initial part of it. They just kind of go and discuss things. The, the guy, the first gentleman that we, the older gentleman here, that uh, that basically said that why do the why do the uh, uh, stocks suck? Uh, he he actually asked the most pertinent questions there at the beginning there. So we'll go and uh, uh, go and let that one go for now, but. <clears throat> just, just so we know, we're all on the same page that all these things that we talk about, um, about uh, you know microtransactions and how much we hate these things, that they're the investors are looking at it more like this is a great way for us to continue to make money, right? And so this continues to go back up to you know uh, just the greed, just the greed aspect of what we're seeing from from Blizzard, right? <clears throat> Activision Blizzard, I should say, I guess. Um, is that there's a lot of greed here. We know that they're, we know they're greedy. We know they're a business. They have to make money, but there's a boundary. There's, there's definitely a boundary that when you cross that boundary and you have to alienate your actual, your, your own, uh, uh, fan base, then eventually it's going to trickle uphill to, to, for example, that gentleman who said, uh, you know, he's like, my kid, my kid plus this, and he wants microtransactions. He wants to pay for microtransactions in Fortnite and all that stuff. Like th these kids, these fucking Fortnite kids are training their parents on how the games industry works. And so that's going back up. And so now, now all of our complaints about microtransactions and all this shit are going back up and then they're going to, they're coming back around. And now people are starting to see now that now, now they're starting to base their predictions based off of it's like, wow, you know, when my kid says this, uh, says he loves his game, but he fucking hates his microtransactions and now he doesn't play his game anymore or whatever. And it's going to influence their, their advice, uh, and, and their, their financial advice and everything. Um, Let's see. Uh, uh, the socks might also suck because of public image. Exactly. Yeah. And these are the, again. These are the these are the types of folks that are influencing uh, investors in what their decision, their, their actual buy decisions uh, should be. Um, see, he's, conf he's confused why stock buyers would think that will translate to a loss of revenue. He doesn't think it will at all. Uh, a lot of anger. No one acting with their wallets. Uh, what's a quote? Yeah, we destroyed the planet and ignored human rights. But for a moment, we really made some money from the shareholders. That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, kind of what it feels like. And so, furthermore, to further go into the um, to further go into the Blizzard stocks thing, I went and pulled up a whole bunch of different. Uh, there's a, there's just a ton. I'm just pull this up here. There's just there's just a ton of articles. It's talking about like what it means. Like why why is Blizzard why are Blizzard stocks you know tumbling here? And it's it's the primary focus is on Blizzard stocks because they are hurting the most. They are the ones taking the biggest fall. Y yeah yeah the market correction overvaluation all that stuff and you know just to talk about that for a minute. Last year, predictions went like this. Blizzard, Activision Blizzard was smashing predictions. And so when they look at a number like one point, they say, okay, 1.9 billion was going to be the target for whatever, the quarter or something. Uh, and then they, they hit, uh, uh, and so, but previously they smashed their 1.6, I think, what are 1.6 uh, uh, estimates or predictions? And they smashed that. And so they're like, okay, 1.9 is going to be the goal. And so they were thinking 2.4, right? But what ended up happening is they just went just over 1.9, I think. I, my numbers might be wrong, but this is the, the general uh, uh, notion here is still correct. Uh, what happens is they went just over that prediction, so they didn't like blow it away like they did like they did the previous quarter in last year. 
And so it's now it's like, well, hold on a sec. I expected this. I expected the 2.4 billion. I expected this thing to continue to rise, but it's not going to do that anymore. And so what ended up happening was last year when they were like, yeah, buy, 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 because Blizzard stock is awesome. It's basically inflated the price of the stocks. And so you over, they basically overvaluated the actual stock itself. And so stocks got up to $80 a share, when in reality, it should have actually been sitting at like $55 a share and not hit $88 uh, with that crazy climb that they had last year. I know because I had Blizzard stock. <laughs> I had Blizzard stock, uh, I think, earlier this year. And I sold it like in... Uh, in like April, maybe I only had it for like six months or so. And then uh, I sold it in April. And then I was just kind of like, okay, cool, because it started to dip a little bit. And I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I want my money back. <laughs> and so I took my money back. <laughs> and that's it. I mean, I, I I just very casually kind of play the stock market, right? I just buy something that looks kind of interesting, you know, a couple here and there, and then it's kind of let it see what goes. But nothing of mine has tanked. Because I sold my Activision stock before this fucking November, apparently. The stock market is a pit of garbage. One of the worst things humanity ever made. Well, it is weird. It is a weird system. It is. That's true. It is. It is a weird system. I'll give you that. So articles all over the place talking about like what's going on with Blizzard, right? Excuse me. Blizzard didn't have, didn't, BlizzCon didn't go how Activision management hoped. Now time for earnings. And so here they also do the same thing. They talk a little bit about, uh, they talk more about, uh, about Activision basically dipping down with a, with a, with a nod to EA. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, Blizzard is tanking, but EA, you know, EA is doing all right. They're, they're tanking. They're tanking almost as, almost as well as Blizzard. Uh, and then this last article here, let me see. There we go. This one, I think nails it. I really think this article does. It says a brave new Activision Blizzard. All right. So in this article, let me clear this out a little bit. I have a couple of notes because it's an eight page article because this is one of those things where they, they separate each, <laughs> each page with, uh, <laughs> with a thing. So the translation of the of of the uh, uh, of the title is he's saying a brave new Activision Blizzard because what he's what he's implying is that this is an opportunity for Blizzard to basically build long to go long on. Uh, go, going long means basically buying a piece of stock and knowing that it's going to grow over years, not over days or weeks. And so he's saying a brave new Activision Blizzard because he's, he's basically saying buy now because it's super fucking low and in 10 years, it's going to be twice as much and you can make money, right? Or five years or two years or whatever. So uh, this is what he's implying when he says <clears throat> a brave new Activision Blizzard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little clickbaity, but he does have a couple, of good, uh, a couple of good notes here where he says right here at the bottom, let me zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see. So first off, the big 40% dip. Look at this chart. Look at this JPEG. Holy shit. And it says right here, it says, is Activision betting on the EA business model? Unfortunately, it seems that Activision is adopting the electronic arts business model. Activision used to focus on building franchises and quality games, which translated into profits. However, Activision saw the profit potential of in-game microtransactions and subscriptions. As a result, Activision is starting to resemble EA. The problem is that gamers hate having to pay several times for the same game. Next page. And now it appears that Activision has become disconnected from its customers. Even Electronic Arts has pulled back from loot boxes and microtransactions. After all, even EA has realized that eventually gamers push back and this hurts profits. EA's Battlefront 2 and Battlefront, uh, Battlefield 5 uh, fiascos prove that gamers' discontent can translate into lower stock prices. EA is also down over 40% from its highs. Uh, say it's similar to banks, they fold if everyone draws their money. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft and Activision are both the bastard children of EA and always have been. Uh, you're talking about the old stock market. That's not how it works now. Investors not only pay for, oh, okay. Okay. So this, we're, we're getting some meta, meta discussion there. Um, <clears throat> but I think here on, uh, he, he goes over and he talks a little bit about just, you know, he clearly plays the games, has a good understanding on what they, what, what players are thinking. And at the same time also gives advice on investor advice at the same time. So. I feel like this is, I feel like, I feel like I could trust his opinion on things because mostly because my, my opinions align with his, uh, but over here, this right here is pretty fucking, this is pretty serious here. No longer a trendsetter. Activision is currently the largest publicly traded gaming corporation in the world. Activision achieved this through innovation and creative games that captivated gamers imagination for countless hours. Many millennials grew up playing Activision's video games, and as a result, it is clear that the company has a considerable business moat. However, it appears Activision has become a trend follower instead of a trend setter. In my view, Activision is afraid to take risks and only wishes to squeeze gamers instead of focusing on making great games. This is so on point. 
I feel like. Uh, I mean, look at look at Diablo Immortal. Way to be late, late, late to the game. It's it. You're literally taking a Diablo clone on mobile. I shouldn't say literally. It looks like you're taking a Diablo clone on mobile, uh, on uh, on mobile, and making it into Diablo. When what it sh what should have happened was five years ago, Blizzard should have said we're putting Diablo on phones. That's what should have happened because we've been playing uh, ARPGs on phones forever, forever. Exactly, Nirwan. Exactly. <clears throat> wow has always copied other MMO ideas. Hots is literally Dota. Little copy. Uh, Hots is literally a Dota LOL copy. Now phone games. Don't forget where Dota originated from, please. <laughs> but, but, uh, it is. You can say that WoW took things from other MMOs and stole them. It's not not original in that respect. But there's a reason why WoW is the biggest, or what is the of all time, really? Because I don't know if MMOs ever could come back in the traditional sense. But what, the reason why WoW was the biggest uh, MMO of all time because because they figured out how to take these things and make them work uh, with obviously. Some imperfections here and there. Some people will disagree that they made things work, but the 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 sub count and the 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 pop culture influence, all that stuff, really means something. It means they did something right, and so that's the innovation part, right? They they did this during peak MMO, right? They didn't do this five years after the fact. Imagine if, if imagine if World of Warcraft came out in in two thousand eleven, right, or two thousand ten. That's the difference here when we're talking about Blizz, uh, 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 Diablo Immortal versus uh, um, World of Warcraft. When World of Warcraft first came out, there was pretty much just what? UO, EQ, uh, Planetside. Uh, I mean, those are like the three that really pop out on me. Final Fantasy XI. Thank you. Yeah, Final Fantasy XI. Uh, there, there were not, there, it wasn't like, you know, years after. DAOC, thank you. Okay, we, there's, all, there's, there's a few. Uh, it wasn't like, what, two or three years after uh, uh, World of Warcraft was released where there's like hundreds of them. Um, so, to his point of Blizzard not being a trendsetter, I believe that's true. I believe that's true. It's, this, is, this is like the Apple thing, right? This is, this is just like the fucking Apple, which I, I hate it. I hate it, okay? Like the headphone jack. We laughed at that. We scoffed at that. We scoffed at the headphone jack being taken off. I mean, I'm an, I'm an Apple user. I have an iPhone, right? I don't have a headphone jack on it. I fucking hate it. It's dumb, right? We scoffed at it. Now, so many phones are coming out without, <laughs> without headphone jacks. And so, I guess it's just, it's just, it's fine. And, you know, some people don't use them. I'm, I'm not that person. Uh, maybe in a couple of years, when, when we go completely wireless, then I'll be that person. But I, that's not who I am now. And so, in that case, you could say, you can make an argument that, that Apple is a trendsetter. The notch, the notch is a trend, is a trend now. We see the notch everywhere because everyone wants to get out to the edge of the screen. And so they're going to put the little notch at the top. And so it's, that's the thing. It's like, you, you, you can say that it's, oh, well, what they're doing is wrong or whatever. We don't want what they're doing. But when other, when other manufacturers start to, and designers start to pick up and, and use those, those things in their designs and it becomes the standard, that's, that means that these companies are the trendsetters. And you can argue, make an argument that World of Warcraft is indeed or was indeed a, a trend-setting game. But then you look at <clears throat> you look at Overwatch, and you could you can make a really good argument that that is not a trend-setting game. Um, uh, and you look at uh Hots, definitely not a trend-setting game. Uh and it's just it's just it's just it's just what it, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, the other one. You know, it's not it's not a trend-setting game. It it sure Call of Duty Blackout is probably the best, <laughs> the the best uh uh um uh, uh, the ble fuck it, hey, the best uh, 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 battlegrounds game that we can. I'm fucking lost for words right now. Uh, that we've um, that we've played recently, or probably ever, really. I, I feel like it is. But battle royale, thank you, man. Jeez, that's why I have a co-host. Fuck it, hey. <sighs> Sometimes words just get away from me. Uh, but still, it's not a trendsetter. And so I think he's right. I think he's right that Blizzard has is, is no longer that company that will take things that kind of float around there and make a make a make uh, develop an idea uh or develop a product even if they borrow elements here and there like they're not th 
they're not taking risks. And I think he's right about this. <clears throat> now, I decided to look up, you see, what, what is EA's problem? What is EA's problem? What's, what's, their, what's their fucking deal, right? Uh, and really, they're... That video did not autoplay last time I loaded this up. Uh, the biggest thing for them is Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 5. I just stopped this video. The biggest thing for them is that they're... <laughs> is that Battlefield 5 is getting pretty shit reviews right now, shit feedback. Uh, and people are already tired of EA's shit, and investors are getting wiser to these shenanigans that developers are pulling in order to make more money. Uh, and so, and this article just basically goes over and just says, yeah, they, they're not doing very, very well because of, uh, because of these things. Yeah, so... Um, so yeah, people also have to remember WoW was released in 2004, but it was in development for only six years, so it seems, uh, so it may seem to be following, but it was in the works early. Yes. Uh, what is this? No. Okay. Um, no Battlefield Royale. That's where they fucked up right there. So, so, to summarize, which is really hard because we covered a ton of shit here, right? This is, the, 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 the outrage, this all started with people talking about Blizzard stock is tumbling and it's a direct result of, of Diablo Immortal, which, and which turn, as it turns out, is not entirely accurate. Is in, it's not entirely true. Okay? Um, what we've discovered today, all of us together, is, uh, is going through a little bit of a, an adjustment. And Blizzard was overvalued last year and they are, it is being corrected. But they are being hit the hardest of any other company because remember, all tech stocks were like were blown up throughout this past year. All of them, all of them were. And so, so for now, so for Blizzard to take the hardest fall, we have to attach that to something. We can't say you. No one could say that it is not has nothing to do with Diablo Immortal. That is a hundred percent false. That is a hundred percent false. It definitely had something to do with it, but it is not the primary catalyst for the for the drop but is it why they were dropping harder than anybody else i believe so absolutely and so so the so in conclusion game companies overvalued only a matter of time for investors actually paid attention to their kids talking about microtransactions and games and we were like well hey my kid hates this stuff that means if he doesn't like this then i'm not gonna put money into this it's not gonna work out because because i obviously want to go where the trends are um so we could pretty much thank Fortnite kids <laughs> for making their parents uh, games industry savvy, really. But what the normies will think, I love using that word, uh, what the normies will think is that since you can't get people to stop pre-ordering and buying shit games, turn to, turn to causing a shitstorm on the internet because that works. People are going to think, people are seriously going to think that their, their internet outrage is completely destroying a company, and that is not entirely true. Not entirely true, but it did play a part in it, I believe. Definitely did. So that's it. That's, uh, that's the end of, uh, whew, man, that was a lot of, there's a lot of digging for all that shit, but I think we got, I think we got everything together. I think we're all on the same page here. Hopefully we're all on the same page here. Uh, it does suck. We should also remember, don't, don't forget that, uh, Mike Morheim left as, as uh, president and CEO and he was, and Jay Allen Brack only took over as president. So, so we have to. Pay attention to that to see where, you know, who is going to be an official CEO, which we, I believe is going to be Bobby, Bobby Kotick because he's the CEO of, uh, uh, of, of, of Activision. So I think that the, the, the merger is basically complete at this point. I think it took some years, but I think the merger is basically complete now. And going forward, I don't know what to expect from, from Blizzard. I have no idea what to expect from, from Blizzard, Activision Blizzard. Uh, but... Hopefully, I mean, assimilation, not merger. I know. That's what it feels like. Uh, I feel like in the future, if, if things continue to go downhill, we could definitely look at Diablo Immortal as a catalyst for uh, the, the announcement of Diablo Immortal, I should say, as a catalyst for the, uh, for the downfall uh, of, of, of Blizzard. If, if it were to continue to go down. I, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that someone there is like, wow, maybe we should take a step back and really look at what we're doing. And not be, not try to be so greedy. We should just try not to be so greedy. Or, or maybe someone over there is really smart and says, "Hey, 
Maybe we should finally put pet battles on mobile. And that's, that's how they'll win us back over. <laughs> that's how they'll win me back over. <laughs> Just give me my pet battles on mobile, man. It's been like fucking seven years. All right. <laughs> F, yeah, F, F. Pay your respects. Um, sign me up. Absolutely. So the next thing we have, this is actually uh, it's a Reddit thread. Because a lot of news comes out of Reddit somehow. Uh, but this is actually, uh, was actually posted direct to Reddit. This is direct news to Reddit. And I thought, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. This is actually really good news, guys. Should be really good news. Uh, this is actually posted by Jim Vasella, who is a producer at EA. And he says, Command & Conquer Remastered is happening. So, we've already had Command & Conquer Mobile. That did not go over very well. That did not go over well at all. At all. Uh, and so this announcement basically goes, this is a long one. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to read it to you. Okay. They're planning on basically remastering the first handful of, of Command & Conquer games and putting them out as a collection. Um, and what makes it exciting is that they're working with Petroglyph. And what makes that exciting, for those of you guys who don't know, is Petroglyph is the, the, the leftovers from Westwood. Hopefully you know what Westwood is, talking about Command & Conquer. They have done nothing but make RTS games. I mean, maybe they have a little here and there. But uh, what's, what's a Western wood? <laughs> what, is, what is a Westwood? <sighs> So Petroglyph Games, guns are hilarious. Petroglyph, uh, they have been doing pretty much nothing but making RTSs since they left Westwood. Uh, so they've had lots of practice over the past several years uh, to do that, decade plus. Um, they actually were the folks behind End of Nations, the Tryon MMORTS. Remember that? Remember that? Never happened. Never came out. I think it had a beta, probably. I think it maybe had a beta. I can't remember if it had a beta that anyone could play. But... Um, but yeah, they did have uh, an MMRTS called End of Nations that they were building uh, for Tryon. And so, of course it makes sense for Tryon to go to the guys who made Command & Conquer to, to do this, right? To, to, to take on this project. And so EA went to Petroglyph. Obviously, End of Nations is dead. So EA went to Petroglyph and was like, hey, let's remaster. Because uh, everyone's getting down on remasters lately. Just like, just like the movies, right? Let's go ahead and just get down on uh, on an actual Command and Conquer uh, um, remaster, and they brought in. There's actually a video uh, where they uh, where they go through. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'll just, I'll just so the number of, one uh, request. Uh, so you got a president of Petroglyph. Uh, you have the senior producer of Petroglyph, and then we scroll over a little bit. I can't remember this guy's name, but he also uh, this guy is one of the sound, lead sound guys for the for Command and Conquer uh, marathon remaster. Please, God, give it to me, please. Um, Anyways, yeah, so they, it's, it's, it seems pretty promising. If, it's, if, it's, if it doesn't work out, if it doesn't work out, then uh, this will be the best. Like, if it ends up being a complete shit, like, just, sh like, a shitty remake with, like, microtransactions and all this stuff, uh, then this will be probably one of the best gotchas I've seen because they went straight to the subreddit. They're, they're posting as themselves. They're, they're, they're replying to comments. Uh... And they have a video talking about it. They seem very sincere that they want to make this happen. And I really hope it does. Command & Conquer wasn't a game I played a lot of. Actually, funny enough, my neighbor, uh, my neighbor played a lot. My neighbor was uh, probably mid-30s or so, and I was like 15. Um, which you would think that sounds weird, 15-year-old going over or whatever, but we played games. Um, I used to go over and watch and play Command & Conquer because I had a Mac. And I, at the time, I don't think that Command & Conquer was on, on, on Mac at the time. Uh, I was such a pleb, uh, <laughs> but he would play, uh, you would play, you know, online games. Well, online, he would basically dial up, you know, his buddies and, uh, they would play, uh, they would play command and conquer, uh, versus, and I was like, that's fucking sick. You know, cause I would play, I would play dial up through like BBS systems for, for, uh, Warcraft two. Uh, and you basically had to like get someone's number and like call them up and then like, play or whatever. And it sucked because like, you try to convince your friends to play and they're garbage at it. And so you get in, you just completely whoop their ass at Warcraft 2. And you're just like, man, it sucks. So you had to go to BBS systems to get people's content info, connect through BBS uh, in order to, uh, uh, in order to connect the, in order to uh, um, connect the games. So you have to use, uh, what was it? It was like a, uh, like Lila? No, what was it? 
Layla. There, there's actually a name for the for the type of uh, communication platform that they use or technology that they use at the time. Uh, and it was it was a woman's name. I can't remember what it was called. But anyways, um, it was it was it was simpler times. It was simpler times for sure. And I was I was it was funny because I actually applied for a job at Westwood. Uh, Westwood was uh, 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 Westwood is located on Tanaya and uh, oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I want to remember this. It's right off the US 95 on Tanaya and like uh something ranch, smoke ranch, smoke ranch, something like that. Uh their old offices used to be uh not that far from where I used to work in high school. And I went I went over there and I applied for a job as as a as a QA tester. Uh well, this is this is back this is a long time ago. <laughs> I wanted to get in as a QA test. I wanted to go in and play video games for for a job, but I didn't get the job, unfortunately. They were looking for somebody that wasn't in school and I was like, "Jerks, I'm not old enough to play. I'm going to I'm going to quit school and then just go play video games for a living," which I almost did. Um thank God I waited. <laughs> so, yes. So, we we have to look forward to hopefully a proper Command and Conquer remaster. Um and yeah, I, I, I really, I, I'm actually looking forward to the, the remaster of the soundtrack and to see what they end up doing with it, because it's already been remixed. So how many times we talked about at the beginning of the stream, I was playing the soundtrack uh, and it's already been remastered a bazillion times. And we all, we all know some of these songs, the Hell March, that song has been remastered or remixed like a bazillion times. Uh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we get a proper, a proper, a proper, uh, uh, Mix. You know what they should do? They should just go get Mick. Mick Gordon. Right? Mick, uh, Mick, Mick Gordon, right? Mick Gordon. I'm really bad at names today. I feel like I'd fuck that up. Feel, yeah, Mick Gordon. Whew, I feel terrible if I fuck that one up. Um, yeah, it, it would be... I feel like he would do a pretty good job. Like, if you wanted to... If you, if you want to... If you want to do a proper cover, like, remix of some of this stuff, and, like, let him kind of just develop on the style and everything, like, I feel like he'd be a good fit for it. Because there's a lot of songs in it that I feel like would really, really slide into Mick Gordon's uh, style. Uh, Mythic, you say you apply there, too? See, everybody, I feel every, every teenager in the, in the, in the mid-late 90s uh, in Vegas were applying at Westwood. It, it, it was, like, the only game studio we had. Yeah, it was pretty much the only game studio we had that anybody knew about. Um, I mean, Petroglyph is still there. So, I mean, if you want to go back and get a job at Petroglyph, they're, they're going to have job openings because they clearly have work to do. So, yay. Go back and get you a job. I'm going to quit here and then go go do that from, from now on. Uh, <clears throat> Hell March and Soviet March. Can you imagine that with Mick Gordon's touch, though? God, it'd be to that fucking baseline, man. Like this. Yeah, dude. Please. 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 Uh, <laughs> you, if they actually make that announcement, I might die. I might die. Um, next up on the list. So yeah, look forward to a Command and Conquer remaster. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. Uh, Vod is now muted. You imagine that for video game soundtrack? Oh, that does happen. That was all the time, actually. Damn. Uh, so big news, big news. PlayStation is skipping E3 for the first time in the show's 24 year history. Is this a big deal? Is it a big deal? I feel like, I feel like it kind of is, but at the same time, it's kind of not like, here's the thing. Sony is winning the console wars right now, right? Last year, almost all the big announcements they made have already been released, save, uh, something road. I can't remember what it's called. Something road. Like one of the games has been delayed till April of next year. Um, so most of the big announcements have been released. And so you would expect them because somebody, I mentioned that because somebody said, um, oh, that well, because their games are not even out yet or whatever. So they'd be, they'd be pimping the same games. I was like, well, that's not entirely true because a lot of those games, a day is gone. Thank you. Day is gone. I knew it was close. I got the four letters, whatever. Um, and so Sony not going to E3. It's, you know, what, you know, the, the first thing that popped in, the first thing that popped in my mind was, you know, those pictures that everybody gets where they're standing in between the Sony, uh, the Sony booth, the Sony booth, E3, uh, uh, Xbox. Let me see if I can find a picture of it here. Everybody gets a picture in between these two because, yeah, here we go. That didn't take long. See, can I, can I, can I get this thing? Ah, pull this out here. For those of you guys who don't know, here we go. E3 notes, whatever this is. Open up. So this picture right here. 
Everybody gets this pic. I have a picture. I have a picture like this, okay? And I never take pictures when I go to these events. I never take, I never take selfies or anything, and I have a picture uh, uh, of here. So that means that this picture, won't, we won't be able to get this picture, uh, uh, this E3. Um, but what does it mean? Like, for me, I feel like they just don't have to. Like, they, they already have the PlayStation experience, which happens in December. Uh, it's basically just a PlayStation, uh, um, you know, event where they focus on PlayStation stuff. So they already have their own convention. And so I don't even know if they necessarily need to go to E3 ever again. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, it's like they, it's not about game announcements or anything. They just don't need to do that. And they're not even, they're not even doing interviews for anything. So, so that part makes me feel like they don't have anything new to announce just yet because they're not even doing um hotel room stuff right so uh when i was working for zam and going around doing interviews for them and scott hawks knows this too because he did it too um we would base a lot of our time was actually spent in hotels because uh game developers wouldn't get a booth they would just get a nice fancy room somewhere set up a whole bunch of tv a whole bunch of uh uh, of uh, of consoles, a whole bunch of PCs or whatever, and then you go up and you have a nice, intimate, personal experience with the developers. You could talk to them, do interviews and everything, get some water or something at this nice, comfy uh, hotel room, uh, and it was great. It was off the floor, and what ended up happening is over the years, a lot of the developers started to move to do that, and so you'd see less on the, less smaller stuff on the floor. And even less bigger stuff was on the floor because you end up getting in a hotel. So I was, I was thought maybe, maybe PlayStation is going to be just, you know, just getting up in a hotel and getting a suite and just doing everything there. No, they're not. They're not doing anything. They're really not doing shit <laughs> for E3. So it's one thing for them for just to say, you know what? They're resting on their laurels. They don't necessarily need to set up a giant booth or anything and spend all that money because they're winning the PlayStation. They're winning the console wars. They don't need to do anything right now. But it's another thing where like, they're not doing anything, nothing. And so it's, it makes me wonder, do they really, do they really think, and I don't know this because I've not yet, I've not been to a uh, PlayStation experience, the, the PlayStation convention, but do they think that that's, that that's enough? <laughs> the floor is a terrible experience for business is the last place you want to get someone excited. It's true. It's true. And, and that's the thing too. Uh, what they ended up doing was what they would have is they would have the big booths that we'd all see, like the big crazy booths and all that stuff. But then in the corner, they would have a shitload of like little cubicles, right? Little office cubicles. Uh, and, and you'd basically go back there to a room and you would still be just completely bombarded by all the noise and everything. And it's like at that point, if you're relegating yourself to a room in the back corner of a convention that you're probably paying hundreds of dollars or maybe a thousand dollars a day or I don't know how much it is, right? Some stupid amount of money a day for why not just go get a hotel room? That makes more sense. Right across the street, you know, the at the W, go get a, a big ass hotel room and then just set up shop there. It'll be better. It'll be better for the people coming in. Uh, you'll have uh, better communication with them, uh, and it'll be comfier, right? And you just look better. Like no one wants to be in a gray cubicle doing an interview. I've done that before with. Uh, I actually just I just personal deposit of mine. Actually, is Ron Ron Games. Uh, Ronimo Games with uh, uh, um, Awesome Knots. We talked about, was, was Awesome Nuts we talked about? I think they had another game or something working on. But, uh, was it Awesome Nuts? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was some years ago. But anyways, yeah, it's like, it sucks. You can hear everything. So, yeah. I was say, we are getting the new consoles in 2020. I'd, so I'd say Sony skipping out, saving all their big-ass lasers for a 2020 console launch. I, I believe that. I believe that. Sony doesn't need to answer for it. Everyone still has PlayStation. Yep, that's what it sounds like. The big boost used to essentially be expensive facades to hold something like a green room inside hotels just make better sense yeah that's true that's true wargaming did that a lot too well all of them do it uh but wargaming is the first that comes to mind because they used to be a right like front and center where you walk in you'd see the tank or you see the big crazy thing and then you walk in you have like a couple of demos there but really it was just there for you to go behind the scenes and uh and talk to them about whatever the game like a private like showing room or something like that where they talk about the game they and then they give you like headsets or something like that. And they try to win you over. Hey, here's a headset. And you know, now talk about our game, um, <laughs> which nobody ever like disclosed that stuff. <sighs> that was a long time ago, guys. We didn't have ethics back then. <laughs> and so it was a nice headset. It was. I didn't get one, though. I was I felt I felt slighted. I was like, fine. Oh, no, it's guy. Because I already had one. I was like, eh, I don't need it. <laughs> Uh, also, I didn't want to carry it. I didn't want to carry the damn thing. I didn't give away shit that's so big. Oh, hey, look, here's a brand new car. I was like, bitch, I don't want to pay for the taxes on this thing. Get out of my face. Wargaming. 
they don't do that shit anymore, which sucks. Um, so yeah, PlayStation skipping E3 is, is pretty interesting. I'm actually now curious, since they're not going to be there at all, if they're going to make any announcements at E3. Like, if they're going to, not at E3, but like during E3, if they're going to make any kind of announcements to talk about, you know, whatever it is that they're going to, uh, uh, to announce. But uh, what's funny is, of course, of course, Xbox want to let you know that they can't wait to see us at E3 2019. They want to make sure you guys all know, hey, 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 guys, hey, hey. We're, we're still here. Uh, we're going to be at E3 2019. I have nothing against Xbox or anything. I'm actually completely out of the console market. I have a PS4 that's basically collecting dust. It's a paperweight. Uh, and I have... I don't have an Xbox One. <laughs> I don't have an Xbox One X. I have, a, I have a Switch. I am not a console person anymore. I have a Switch and a Steam Link. And that's all I need. That's all I need. Oh, I guess the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. Sure, that, that, that kind of counts. Uh, but um, that is, does that count? I don't think so. No one's, no, one's take, no one's counting console sales for the classics, are they? Um, what up, Calamity? We're in the news right now. What's up? Uh, they have plenty of cons and such announced things. Tokyo Game Show, for instance. I don't know, though. Yeah, Tokyo Game Show is a big one for them. Absolutely. And then, of course, their own, their own convention. Uh, Sony Microsoft are fighting while Nintendo is playing with a, with a stick in the mud. Well, it's a very, it's a very nice stick in the mud, apparently, because they're doing well. Uh, the classics don't count, just a physical emulator. Man, just take that away from me. Jesus. I feel like console war is getting closer and closer to mimicking the fake console war in the hyperdimensional Neptunia franchise. What? That's a little too much for me. Nintendo still feels like they're throwing shit at a wall. Well, the, the shit that, the latest shit that they, that they threw stick, has stuck. For me, anyways. Um, for a lot of people. This the switch is awesome. The switch is awesome. All right. Um, last thing on the list here. Well, first off, I know that some of you guys are probably waiting for some like fallout, fallout stuff, right? Fallout 76. Thank you for stopping by, Scott. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Have a good one, dude. Um the last the, the uh, Fallout 76. So uh Reddit hates the game. Um, uh, I am playing Fallout 76. I have no, uh, I have nothing firm to say about it yet because I'm only 16 hours in, which is not really enough time to really have a, a I feel like a good solid opinion of a, of a, of a title, but that's just me. Um, I feel like so far they are correct that it's a flawed game. It is a flawed game. Uh, and they're tired of Bethesda's bullshit when it comes to flawed games. They are correct in that. Uh, so they are correct in saying that it is a Bethesda title. It is not an excuse, but it is something that's, that, that is... It is the way it is. This is up as the game. So what did you expect? And I feel like reporting on it and saying, but this is full of bugs and all this. It's not like actual bugs in the game, but you know, like issues with the game. Uh, it's full of issues and bugs and everything. And, uh, and it's terrible. I feel like the only response to that would be, well, it's a Bethesda title. What did you expect? And I guess that's just what we've all settled on nowadays. So, um, I don't have any opinions on it just yet. 16 hours is not enough time. I feel like you need like 100 hours to, to really, 100 hours is a bit much, uh, to really get a gist. But I, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of where the where that game's going. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll probably talk about it next week or maybe a week after when we see, uh, next week's Thanksgiving actually, so maybe not. A uh, week after, hopefully we see some kind of updates or something, some good stuff. Um, now the last thing we'll talk about here is the, this is something that I feel like all you guys would be interested in, of course. Uh, we're going to talk about the... If this page ever loads, the 2018 Game Awards. Yeah. This is a serious thing. You leaving? Okay. Yeah, maybe. I'll text you. No. Okay. Love you. <laughs> uh, my wife's leaving, guys. Um, but she'll be back. Don't worry. So. The Game Awards. I know, I know. You guys, the ellipsis, ellipsis, so many ellipsis. All right. So the Game Awards is uh is upon us. It's that time of year. It's that time of year. There are so many categories. So many categories. Game of the year, best ongoing game, game direction, narrative, art direction, score, audio, blah blah blah. A lot, a lot. Um, you can vote if you want. I have I have a couple of thoughts on. On it, so game of the year we have uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've not played it. Uh, when people say Odyssey, I think Mario Odyssey, and it's very confusing. Uh, Celeste is up there. God of War is up there. Marvel Spider Man is up there. Monster Hunter World is up there. Red Dead Redemption Two is up there. There's no Fortnite. I don't know how this happened. I don't know, but there's no Fortnite. 
We're going to talk about the results after it happens. The show is December 6th or 12th. Uh, hold on. Whoops. It is on, I want to say it's the, can you just fucking tell me the date? Like really add to calendar? Here, air times, distribution part. Do they really have the date? Some of you guys, one of you guys tell me. I think it's, it's next month, all right? Well, af after they air it, we're going to talk about the results because I'm pretty sure none of us will agree with it. Who votes on these things? Uh, Fortnite came out 2017 according to a quick search. That has not stopped them before. That has not stopped them before. Uh, I do feel like, I feel like it's odd that Celeste is up here. And, 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 and I want to make sure, I want to make it very clear that Celeste is a good game. Celeste is a good game. Um, is it, is it the, is, is it the game, is it game of the year worthy? To me, it's not. Because, you know, I played it for a short while on stream here, and I felt like it was a, it was a good platformer, but it didn't, it wasn't necessarily game of the year worthy. Because it just felt like a slightly better platformer than the 1,000 other platformers that I played in the year prior. Um, that's one reason why I didn't finish the game. Because I was just kind of like, cool, it's a good platformer. All right, I'm out. But not, it wasn't like groundbreaking or anything like that. But it's up there. Uh, best ongoing game, Destiny 2. Uh, Fortnite. No Man's Sky. I fucking hope No Man's Sky wins this. Overwatch. Uh, Rainbow Six. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. I'm sure Guns is going to be all over that one. Um, there was one, no, there's one, uh, let's see, there was one who's missing from this list I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Um, Pixelate platforms with a new trend, that's the latest contender, that's it. Well, it was la two years ago. <laughs> Who the fuck is Celeste? <laughs> I hope that, I hope that No Man's Sky wins this one. Uh, best game direction, A Way Out, da 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 God of War, Marvel, Spider-Man. You're gonna see a trend, lots of Red Dead Redemption, lots of Detroit Become Human, lots of God of War, uh, lots of Spider-Man. Uh, Warframe, thank you, Jesus Christ. Well, Warframe, was that, I mean, it's, I guess it's an ongoing game. Yeah, so of course it should be up there. Yeah, it's a fucking crime that's not. Thank you. Yes, thank you, co-host Saturn Dragoon. Yeah, Warframe not being up there is, uh, that's a problem. But it is what it is. Uh, this one is for Best Art Direction, Octopath Travel, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Return of the Abra Din. I never heard of that game, which is fine. I'm not saying that because I haven't heard of it. It doesn't belong up there. Uh, Celeste is up there for uh, Best Score in Music. I haven't been really good at keeping up with video game soundtracks lately because I'm still listening to the No Man's Sky soundtrack. I'm sorry. Uh, it's how good it was. I should just put No Man's Sky back up there. Why not? Spider-Man. I didn't even know it really had a great soundtrack. Uh, Octopath Traveler, Red Dead Redemption, Best Audio, Forza, God, da, 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 Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption. What do you guys think? Red Dead Redemption might win something this year. Maybe. Maybe. Best Independent Game. Oh, hey, there's Celeste. Cool. Dead Cells. Yeah, is it a big circle jerk? I mean, it kind of feels like it is. But we still want, we still want to present it so you guys are all informed. Best uh, mobile game? Fortnite? PUBG Mobile? My God. My fucking God. My fucking God. Please tell me it wins best fucking mobile game. Jesus Christ. Diablo's not on. No, next year. Next year. Uh, action game. Dead Cells is on the list. Awesome. Dead Cells is a fantastic game. Everyone should play it. Uh, the Messenger. The Messenger. Yeah, the Messenger is a good one, too. That's up there. Um, it is, it is weird though. Like, I feel like they played a handful of indie games and they were like, yeah, these are the ones. And it's just like, wow. Like what was, oh man, there is a game. It was, it was Holo Biscuits favorite game of 2015 or 16, 15, maybe it was, uh, it, it was just like an exploring game. Um, it was on the PlayStation, uh, not brothers. Before Brothers, maybe it was 2014. You guys are right, though. That was another favorite of his. Uh, but that one, I believe, won a bunch of awards. Uh, Journey. Thank you. Journey's the one. Uh, Journey was a title that I feel like was not popular until someone discovered it, right? And, I, and, and then it started winning awards. I feel like what's happening here is, like, these are popular indie games that have been scraped off the top and put into, you know, put into the mainstream. It's like, okay, these are the best because these are the ones that everyone's playing. Not, then that's not necessarily true. And Journey, I feel like, is a great example of that. While it was a popular game in its own right as an indie game, I don't feel like it really took off until it started getting the rec getting recognition. It was basically pulled up from the from the mess. It was a diamond in the rough, right? Uh, it wasn't surfaced organically, like uh, like like a game like Celeste or or Dead Cells uh, it would have been. So. Yeah, it just, it just, it just, if you look at, compare this to like indie game awards, which I feel like is still going on, right? Um, 
the Nintendo Labo is the best fucking thing, family game. Uh, it, do, it yeah, it doesn't feel like this is an actual good representation of indie games. And you guys know I love my indie games. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's it is it's just weird. Uh, BattleTech, Frostpunk, Into the Breach. These are all in strategy titles. This is pretty good. Valkyria Chronicles. I'm torn on this one. Personally, I'm torn on this one. Right? I didn't play the Banner Saga three. BattleTech. I am. I have my issues with it, mostly because of the speed. But overall, it was still a good game. Frostpunk was awesome. Frostpunk. Oh my god. Frost. Frostpunk was. That should win for fucking soundtrack. Holy crap. I had to turn off the music. I had to turn off the music because it was so. It was just so like uh, Im immersive uh, and really pulled you into this uh, to this game. Uh, into the breach. Uh, I only played a little bit of that. It was fun. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles. I played a lot of that. I really, really, really loved Valkyria Chronicles. So I'm torn between pretty much Frostpunk and Valkyria Chronicles. Um, so yeah, but the sex of in VC4 sets an interesting narrative. It was, you know, what? it's just the one time, man. The, the one guy actually he did, does it a few times. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen that article. It didn't really get any traction though. I was pretty surprised. I was like, oh God, they're going to be all over this thing. And it's like, oh no, they didn't. They kind of just left it alone. Oh, cool. The city must survive. Please, please. I'll, I'll, I'll be very happy if they get it. Best sports racing game. Oh, is, is, uh, do we have a uh, uh, rocket league in here? Well, no, no, that's an old game. Never mind. Rocket league's on this year. Never mind. That was, that's old school. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, Mario Tennis Aces. I haven't played Mario Tennis, so I don't know. Might be a toss up between that and Forza. Best multiplayer, Fortnite, of course. Um, sea of Thieves. <laughs> and we're pretty much at the bottom here. Student game, these are all games that we haven't played. No, I haven't played, rather. Uh, debut indie game, I haven't played it. Messenger, Messenger was good. Dude, Messenger is super good. Best esports game. This, oh, that, this is where Rocket League is missing, actually. Rocket League, I want to say StarCraft too, but uh, that's just personal bias there. Overwatch is up there. League of Legends is up there. I, I want to say StarCraft too because League's up there, but whatever. Uh, Fortnite uh dota 2 and uh cs go i would say of this group of this group if you want to say like best uh best esport game i would say cs go of this group i would say cs go uh i just feel like cs go is probably the most polished of this uh of this group. oh yeah and that's the other thing yeah, we should point that out too no fighting games yeah no fighting no no fighting games um no, no Rocket League. Rocket League is a good game, man. It's a good esports. It's easy to watch. It's accessible. They should be pimping that, really. Uh, Fortnite does not fucking belong up here, man. It really doesn't. I mean, there's a few games that really don't, but yeah, I guess they narrowed it down somehow. And for some, somehow, somehow, the games I want are not in there. Rainbow Six is not in there. No, of course it's not in there, dude. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, your best esports player. Uh, these are all just you know players. If you follow esports, here they are. I don't actually know any of these guys. Kind of shitty because I don't follow them. Uh. This is great. Okay. This is awesome. Best esports team. Australis, uh, Cloud9, Fnatic, London Spitfire, OG. Does anybody see something here? Does anybody see something? Anybody? Co-host. What do you guys see? Come on. Come on. Get on it. How is fucking Cyril not up there? Dude, Cyril should definitely be up there, but whatever. No Dr. Disrespect. No US team. No, no, no. No Korea. No, 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 no. Only Western teams. Okay, that part I didn't notice, but that's not true. Uh, I think uh, um, uh, Fnatic is, uh, uh, Fnatic is uh, EU, aren't they? I believe they're EU. Um, they're all whites. <laughs> God damn. All right, I'll stop you right there. I'll stop you right there. Uh, Cloud9 and London Spitfire are the same organization. They're both owned by uh, Jack Etienne. <laughs> They're oppressing women. Jesus Christ. I'm glad I stopped it while you were ahead. Jesus fucking A. Yeah. Cloud9 and London Spitfire are the same. They're the same. They're the same group. <laughs> you guys are way off. My God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man, that fucking spiraled out. Jesus. Uh, best esports coach. Uh, obviously, I'm going to vote for Cloud9. On all this, I'm a, I'm a Cloud9 fan. Of course, I'm a for Cloud9. Um, then they have like best uh, esports event. Yeah, E League is the Evo League, Overwatch Grand Finals, International. Uh, yeah. So they get some ableism. Oh, Jesus. They have thumbs. Yes, they're very able. 
<sighs> I only like C9 for Sneaky's cute cosplays. Man, I'm surprised at how cute that dude is <laughs> in cosplay. It's like, it's scary. <laughs> Your best esports hosts, Golden Boy, Machine, uh, Bloom, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name, uh, and Red Eye. You know him. The, uh, the GIF. Savage. Wrecked. Come on. The GIF, everybody fucking uses it. You guys all know Red Eye in one way or another. And the other one I would say you guys all probably know is probably going to be uh, uh, Golden Boy. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't follow them specifically, but yeah. Uh, C9 come back to win Triple OT versus FaZe, E-League. Uh, G2 beating RNG. This is sad. This is sad for me because um, I really liked, I, I really liked uh, uh, Serral winning. I thought that was a pretty big moment, but that's not up here. So I don't know who does these things, man. Yeah, no Serral. That's, that's a fucking huge downer. Like, seriously, I, I, that's what I feel like. Wow, you guys just really don't like StarCraft. <laughs> like, that's a huge deal. Serral, that's a huge deal. Uh, the first non-Korean win in 20 years or whatever. Like, that's fucking massive. Um, and he did it, like, handily. Like, he, he really did it with, with, with you want to say with ease. Uh, but man, he did great. He did fucking great. Uh, Sarah took the whole SC2 scene by storm by this year. It's insane. He's not getting wider recognition. For it. It's because it's because of StarCraft 2. It's because people are not um, watching StarCraft 2, which sucks because they have such great casters. Uh, it is, it is a, I, feel, I feel like it's a fun esport to watch. Uh, content creator of the year. I don't know any of these guys. It's just for Ninja or something. Uh, I only know about Pokemon because she stopped wearing makeup or something and everyone like really lost their mind over that. And I was like, whoa, if I start like wearing a lot of makeup, will I get attention like that? Please. Please let me do that. Um, but apparently, yeah, Ninja's gonna win this one. We all know! I should be up there. You're right, I should be up there. Maybe next year, guys. Maybe next year. It's probably gonna be Ninja. It's probably gonna be Ninja. We'll see. Uh, I'd say, I'm like, this year has been one of the biggest years of viewership for a StarCraft 2 in a long time. Good! Good. Good. Uh, I, would love, I would love to watch more of that. Please. And love to have more people to talk about it with. Um, StarCraft 2 doesn't have the Floss Dance emo. Oh, man. That's true. The floss is everywhere. Everywhere. Every, every, we're watching TV. Like, I don't remember what the fuck we were watching. We were watching TV and like, uh, oh, oh, God. I don't know what we were watching, but like somebody started doing the floss, e like the floss emo. Someone started doing the floss dance. And I was just like, oh, no. It was like for a brief second. I was like, oh, my God, they really squeezed that in there. No, stop it. Um, anyways, yeah, free to, free to play has been huge for StarCraft 2. Good. Good. That's all the content creators. Yes. Well, that's the same can be said for all the other categories, too. It's like, that's all the nominees. That's weird. Uh, and I feel like, you know, it's true. There's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of things that we want to see that are not going to show up in these things for, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, and we feel slighted and I guess they just wanted to narrow it down. I do feel like it's weird though. I do feel like the options are too limiting given, just given how big the esports and gaming scene is as a whole. I feel like these, uh, uh, e despite having a bazillion categories, I still feel like the number of nominees is a little too low. Even even the uh, even the uh, um, the Academy Awards lists are longer than this. I feel like even the nominee list for this is like not. It doesn't stop at five or four. I feel like those things go on like to ten or something, don't they? Um, yeah, it's just it's just it's just weird. It's just weird. <sighs> Could Total Biscuit get an honorary no, honorary honorary nominee? Yeah, right. That'd be nice. But it's StarCraft too. In their minds, even though we feel otherwise. So. Content creators should be way higher. I mean, considering content creators are the reason why these a lot of these things actually exist in this in this form nowadays. Uh, yes, I feel like they should get the recognition, but you know they're not. Like when when a content creator takes a game and it turn and they turn it into a uh and, and they turn it into a massive franchise, like Ninja. Actually, we could yeah we could say that absolutely. Ninja is one hundred percent, uh, or maybe ninety nine percent, uh responsible for the success of Fortnite. Absolutely. And for content creator, but that's been happening for games like across the board for for all time. Like, you know, we've known about popular, you know, gamers or something or content creators, not all time, but the past like decade at least, uh content creators who have helped launch games. Uh and so absolutely they should get uh some kind of extra recognition besides like a VidCon award or whatever the fuck. Um TV boosted Warframe. I had nothing to do with that, I guess. Fine. 
Uh, but no, it's true. Like Total Biscuit had a massive influence on uh, on on Warframe. Ninja had uh, had obviously Fortnite, uh, and yeah, it's just like there's just just countless you know kind of creators that have uh, helped build you know build uh, um, games up. And I'm trying to think like what would the opposite of that be? Like what what gamers are responsible for taking down games? Can I, can I, if, if that's, if that's a thing, can I get one for Final Fantasy 14? Can I, I want to at least say I played a part of that. I want to at least say I played a part of, just a little sign, tiny part of that, at least. Maybe a little bigger than that. Like, maybe like this, I feel like, maybe like that. Please give me an award here. So, Firewatch PewDiePie. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, so, uh, a lot of content creators get big because they stream so specific, so it is kind of which, uh, uh, which came first thing. No, it's true, it's true, but I mean, but, but still, it's like, it's like hiring a PR guy. You hire a PR guy to make your game big, right? If you make a game, you put it out there, it's not gonna go anywhere. But if a content creator picks it up and starts playing it, and it starts getting, uh, getting traction, then that person is now your PR guy. Uh, you took down Warframe, uh, I took down Warframe a bit when you made a clan for the first, that's true, that's true, I did take down Warframe for a bit, yeah, yeah. Warframe, Final Fantasy IV, I need like one of those, uh, 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 you know, like the Red Baron or whatever, like the fucking fighter <laughs> planes. It's somebody like a stamp on the side of every kill I've got. to be like, boom! Just one on the side of my seat or my desk or something. Just bam, Warframe, bam, Final Fantasy fourteen. That's probably it. <laughs> That's probably it. I probably had a, I probably had a good say in Trials too. Just, just so you guys know, probably had a pretty good say in Trials. And maybe Don't Starve too. Yeah, yeah. Let me toot my own horn for a second. Now that's it. All right. So that is it for the news this week. That is it for the news this week. Uh, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of fucking stuff. Holy shit. Um, next week, he's gone mad with power. Jesus, calm down. Uh, next week is, is next week Thanksgiving? What is today? Today is the 16th. Yeah, next week's Thanksgiving. So we probably will not have a show next week. We'll probably just do regular streams and it's going to be wonky because we have family here and everything. So it's going to be weird. Uh, and so we probably will not have a new show next week. The following Friday is a normal week. Any comment on the Monopoly for Millennials? Okay, okay, before we get out of here, yes, yes, I did see that. I'll pull it up. Monopoly, because everybody should see it. It just came out right before, it's actually in my recent. Uh, it just came out right before the uh, we started doing the show here. Monopoly for Millennials. Withers, we're not quite done yet. Hold on, hold on, but thank you. Monopoly for Millennials is not about real estate because you can't afford it anyway, Hasbro says. What the fuck is this? Yes, where's Sam? I feel like Sam would have the most to say about this, actually. So, this this version of... It's not The Onion. This version... <laughs> it is not The Onion. It is not The Onion. Let me zoom out of the picture a little bit. There we go. Adulting is hard. You deserve a break from the rat race. So, the difference between this and regular Monopoly is they don't do real estate. And Monopoly for Millennials because they don't, because Millennials don't or can't buy homes. Uh, and so, <laughs> so they built, they built this game as, as a means to, to, I guess, prick the ears of Millennials who are late to this, uh, which is, which is fine. It's, it's weird. You know, when you when you read the article, it it does say that the game was actually like the the game lead designer or whatever is actually like a twenty eight year old or something like that, uh, and so it's like all right, so it's not like some old guy or whatever, but still, 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 Monopoly for millennials. So there you go, it's gonna be coming soon. Is there is there a date on this thing? Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, it says the price tag. So the game's nineteen dollars and eighty-two cent price tag appears to be a reference to the first year of the millennial generation, though some contend it began in nineteen eighty-one, which is also a point of contention. Nobody knows when the fuck it started. They just want to say, "Hey, were you? Are you under forty? You're a millennial, I guess." However, that works. So yeah, <sighs> when Monopoly was created, people were poor too. Now the game's original conceptual. That's right. It's true. That's true. It was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember reading that somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily true, but I, I read it somewhere, which means it probably was. Uh, and so, yeah, they, they was originally designed as a, as a means to allow people, uh, to show people that uh, money corrupts. So there you go. Uh, were you born in 1981? You're cool. 1982? Fuck you, millennial. Your avocado toast. <laughs> and your selfie filters. Dang. All right. 
Is it odd that Monopoly has Monopoly on Monopoly? That is weird. Thank you so much for watching. This is Just News. My name is Mike B. These are my hosts. Please say, please say goodbye to everybody at home. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me at twitter.com slash akmikeb if you still use Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you want akmikeb photo, but watch out for the nudes. And of course, right here on twitch.tv slash akmikeb. Pressures Legends number one. See ya!